From the previous videos, we have our constant expression for the f literal 5. We have our parameter expression for the parameter i. We have our greater than, which combines the two expressions into a single expression tree and takes the parameter expression on the left and a constant ex const expression on the right. And then all that is left to do is to create a lambda expression with a body of the expression that we've just built. This is the body of the expression. So <coughs> the way we do that is the same as we've done with all of our expression types. And, but instead of saying constant parameter or greater than, we simply say expression dot lambda. You'll notice there's two overloads. We always use the generic one. The generic overload requires a delegate type, which is going to represent the lambda expression's delegate type. If or had we assigned our lambda expression to a delegate, which we saw in the very first video on this playlist, we assigned it to a func int bool. There's several delegate types we could use and create our own that that uh, take an int as a parameter and return a boolean. But anyway, I'm going to grab this and copy that, and then paste it as the generic type argument for the lambda function here. And then the actual function requires a body and then the parameters for the lambda. And the body is the entire lambda or expression here, the root node, or the topmost, uppermost node, is the greater than node. So we will pass greater than there. And then all the parameters, there's only one for this lambda expression, and it is i. And we represented that with this parameter expression i param so i param and we're done there now notice expression dot lambda the return type let me control ki here and i can move my mouse now it returns this expression dot lambda returns an expression object of type func int bool well i believe we've seen that before isn't that what we started out with so i'm actually just going to copy this and this one we called test. I think this one we will call test2, analogous with this one we created up there. So now we have test2, which is a lambda expression with greater than as the root node, and then greater than has a right and a left operand. And, and hopefully that's pretty straightforward. We're done. Okay, we have test2, which is identical to test. And in the second video on this playlist, you saw me do this, and I spat out a bunch of garbage or copied a lot of code from the reflector. I showed you what the compiler built, and I just kind of blasted you with all that information. But over the last few videos, we actually picked that apart, and now we have an expression tree that does absolutely nothing. Okay, this is simply data. This, these are objects. It creates objects. Uh, whoops, sorry. All of these functions here are methods, constant, parameter, greater than, lambda. They simply return objects out on the heap that are just sitting there saying, hey, I'm a lambda expression. Hey, I'm a greater than. I'm a i. I'm a 5. They, they don't actually do anything. It's a lot like a database. There's data inside of a database or even in a data file. You can open up a file. But if you don't do anything with a file or a database, it's just there. It doesn't do anything. It is up for us to look at those objects in RAM and reason about them, to do something about them. But all it is now is just data ch sitting out in RAM. This is actually quite powerful, even though this is, this is dumb data sitting out in RAM, it's actually quite powerful. I sh I'll show you in the not too far future. I'll, hopefully I can get around to doing a whole playlist on the Entity Framework and how that works. But I just want to give you a little taste of how the Entity Framework will use this data and, data and actually say, oh, I see what you're trying to do. Let me convert this data to a SQL statement that I can send to SQL Server, and SQL Server will run it. All right? Yeah, we've seen Lambda expressions convert to code, and code runs just the same way we, are, we always expect code to run. It just calls the method a hundred times for each element. But but if I turn this into data, SQL Server can say, oh, you want all the elements where some i is greater than Ah, oh, OK, I know what that means. I'll do it for you. I'll, show, I'll do a video on that shortly. But I just want to show you one other little thing about these expressions that we don't often do, but we certainly can. I can come down here and, and remember test and test2, these are both the same. The compiler pretty much generates this code for us, but it, it does it in a little shorter fashion. But it's our, our code is pretty much identical to what the compiler does. Uh, I want to show you that I can say test or test2, either one. I can say, hey, compile. 
All right, generate the code, the .NET code, compile your Lambda expression into actual code. And hopefully you're scratching your head a little bit saying, well, wait a minute, I thought the C-sharp compiler did all the compiling. That's true. And when I say compile, it's not like we go back to the C-sharp compiler and say compile. I can certainly run this code on, on computers that don't have the C-sharp compiler installed. Instead, what happens is this compile function runs a pretty intricate algorithm, but it examines our Lambda expression and uses, let me just show you, using system.reflection.emit. Right, and it emits or creates missile code, MSIL code. Remember, we start with C sharp code and then CSC.exe converts that to missile code, Microsoft Intermediate Language, which then at runtime, the jitter, J I T T E R, the JIT, converts that to native instructions, ones and zeros, and that sort of thing. Well, at runtime, when I say compile, when we're running, it says, hey, emit, using this emit library that comes with .NET, emit the code in missile so that the jitter can do its job and actually run the code that we generated. So it's kind of like, well, it is not kind of like, it is exactly like we are creating code at runtime. We're, we're compiling code at runtime. Compile times and runtimes just cross, kind of like the streams and if you ever watch uh, Ghostbusters, that's kind of scary. Well, look at the compile here. Control KI compile returns a delegate, a funk delegate. Hopefully, you're very comfortable with funk now. That a delegate that uh, takes an int as an argument and returns a bool. So I could certainly say, hey, um, funk int bool me deli. Is that me deli? Me deli gets test dot compile, and then I can certainly invoke this delegate. Uh, just the same way I invoke any other delegate. Let's do three. That's what we did in the previous videos. And then me deli, let's do eight. All right, three is not less than, or three is not greater than five, so that'll return false. And eight is greater than five, that'll return true. Let me alt drag down here. Console dot right line just to prove that we can actually print the results here. Control F5, and look at that test. We were able to compile test. This is test up here. And we emitted code at runtime. I'll hopefully get around to doing a playlist on that. And we were able to run that code. And we can do the same thing with test two. Hey, compile these objects in RAM into actual code. And sure enough, we can run it and get results. So that's kind of interesting. Most of the time, we're not doing this. It's actually kind of slow. You could think it's kind of expensive. We're, we're compiling code at runtime. That's got to take time at runtime to compile code. And yeah, that's, that's generally not what we're doing with this. If, th if we really wanted to get a delegate out of it, then forget this whole expression thing. Let's just assign our lambda expression to a delegate, and then the compiler will kick in and just convert it to, to a method like we've seen a hundred times before this. What we generally use this expression for is say, hey, hey, hey compiler, do your magic, write all that code so that at runtime we'll create this object structure and then I can look at this object structure, reason about it and do something different like on SQL Server. I'll show you uh, using the entity framework in a video not too far out. But before I end this video, if you remember our original code, I think I still have it here. I threw it in Notepad. Let me clear this off here as well. We'll just it off. Remember, this is what the compiler did. I even wrote a comment there. This is what the compiler did. And if you look, the compiler's hopefully this wasn't too intimidating when I threw it at you. But basically, the compiler just said, you know, well, can I format? Let me change the font here. See if I can get it to fit just a little bit better. Okay, the compiler. I'll scroll. Forgive me. I gotta. I'm trying to make this all show up for you so we can compare both of them. The compiler just skipped all of the uh, intermediate variables. Remember we made this cost expression intermediate variable and we made this I parameter intermediate variable and then we made this greater than and the compiler it, it kept the uh, expression 3 around that's our its parameter expression but then it just wrapped it all in like this so you can stop the video here if you want but I'm just gonna do exactly what the compiler did just shorten this so you can kinda get a feel for what's going on. We don't need to say const expression here we could just grab this value that returns our const expression and paste it right there okay and we're done with that we don't need that temporary anymore the parameter the parameter we need the variable name but what we're going to do instead is 
grab this creation of the parameter and where we pass that in we use that right here so instead of just assigning it out here we'll just assign it in here and and uh, like so so there you go we do the assignment and we actually pass it to uh, expression dot greater than right there and then we don't need the the greater than anymore because we just pass that whole entire thing in for the body of our lambda so we'll just dump that right there and now we no longer need this line of code so we can delete that and then we're done so then we have test two and all this kind of ugly code that I tried to format for you in the previous video but let me just show you that we can still run it still compile it test two dot compile get the same results so that's why the compilers version was just so scary is it it doesn't like to do all those temporary variables it just says hey let's just take the return value of all those expressions and pass them in immediately where we need them but anyway that's probably more than you wanted out of this video